Shed Studios in sunny Garner, North Carolina. I absolutely cover, I love covering, cove lovering, whatever that means, love covering absolutism. And uh, unfortunately, this is our last person. I have so many great stories to tell, but they only let me cover so many people. The last person we are covering is Frederick the Great and a very interesting story and a place that we haven't talked a ton about. So let's dive in to our man, Frederick. Look at them curls. Look at them little curls. He got nice curls there. All right, kids, here we go. Let's do this. All right, Frederick the Great, he is from modern day Prussia. I'm going to tell you now that is not Russia. Prussia is Russia with a P and it's located in modern day Germany. Most of it, a small portion is located into Poland. Now, if you look at it here on the map, you can see Prussia in like a light colored blue. Now you see all these other little kingdoms. That's why there's so many German princesses. So if you look, pretty much every color on here has a princess. I might have three or four. I might have two or three different families of princesses. That's how we end up with so many to uh, kind of tie that into our um, Sophie or Catherine the Great story. Now, one thing that is unique about Prussia, most of these kings and queens see themselves as the head of the military, regardless of whatever country you're talking about. But in actuality, like they're not. Okay, like Philip II, he is in charge of Spain, but he has generals that know more than him. Okay, Henry VIII actually did a lot with the military in England, but that was somewhat uncommon for his period of history. In Prussia, it's much different. The king is the leader of the military and he is going to be out there with them. So the prince is going to go through something like boot camp. It's not going to be a uh, fun prince princess time where they run around like Sophia the first and, and talk to animals. It's not like that, little children. Okay, Prussia is hardcore. They are known for how good their soldiers are. They have an elite core of soldiers, so much so that other countries hire people from the Prussian army. So if you retire from the Prussian army, another country would say, hey, we'll pay you to come fight for us. Uh, you look no further than the American Revolution, the 13 colonies guys. Part of uh, who the patriots were fighting are Prussian soldiers that the British had hired as a part-time army. All right, so again, elite core of soldiers. They're more like modern day Spartans if you uh, are interested in ancient history and know how great of soldiers that the Spartans were. So this is going to make life a little bit different on Frederick. Frederick is, is expected to do all these military things, and he does them. He does what his father asks, but he has some other focus. One, he tries to learn Latin. He enjoys learning these other languages. He reads a lot. He likes to paint, and he loves to play music. His dad thought a good portion of what he was doing is a waste of time and doesn't advance this military career. We see his dad destroy his art supplies. His dad throws his books away. We have evidence that there was a lot of physical abuse of Frederick, okay? Now, if you think about it, like Frederick's not doing drugs, like he's learning Latin. If I came home, my son's door is shut. I push open the door and I say, what are you doing? And he's like, um, I'm learning Latin. And I'd be like, wow, that's pretty impressive. This dad that thinks that it doesn't help advance his military career. So you're going to see him be very harsh on Frederick. Um, later on in life, and we have another picture of Frederick here. And I'll mention this because I mentioned it already. The curls, look at them little curls. If you see, most people wore wigs back then, especially men that are in the military. All right, so that's not his real hair. Uh, the reason lice, lice was a big deal. Um, I'm sure you've seen it, somebody gets critters in school and you get the little paper and they've got to stay home for several days. So they got little critters, critters in their hair. That's extremely common back then. It's kind of common now, but extremely common for the military. So you, just, you will see these guys shave their heads 
and they wear this wig. Now, the larger the wig you have, they're more expensive. You are considered to be wealthier. So that is Frederick at a young age. Now, he was promised to marry a British princess, but his dad rethinks this. Great Britain's an island and a long ways away from Prussia. There's another country below um, Prussia called Austria. They've gone to war several times, had several issues um, throughout history. So his dad thought, let's change this British alliance. Let's create an Austrian one. And, and from what we can tell, this was kind of the final straw for Frederick. He's had everything taken away from him. He's had everything dictated to him. His dad is extremely harsh. This marriage was changed. And we're going to have Frederick run away with his best friend. His dad sends out like the elite corps of soldiers, captures Frederick, and puts him in jail. Now, when I say puts him in jail, this isn't time out. Like, you've been a bad boy. You go sit in that chair. You're in time out. It's not like that. No, he put him in a military prison with a dirt floor, fleas, and a, and a wooden bucket that, that you have to poop in. Okay, it's a harsh prison. Like people are going to be executed in this prison and his own son is in there. One day in this prison, he is made to look outside. There's a small window there. He is forced to look outside. There is all kinds of commotion. There's his dad, the military and his best friend. And his dad says to him, you have crossed me for the last time. You will do exactly what I say. And his dad has his best friend beheaded right in front of him. All right. You think it's a big deal. You get your little TikTok taken away, you get your PlayStation taken away. This guy's dad killed his best friend. And at this point, we see Frederick's personality completely change. It's completely different. If his dad says something, he just does it. He goes ahead and marries the Austrian princess, has nothing to do with her. He withdraws himself. We really see for the rest of his life, he doesn't have like best friends. And he doesn't have that. He doesn't have these close associates. Nonetheless, um, we see this totally change Frederick's life. But when his dad dies, Frederick turns around and literally undoes everything his dad ever did in his life. He breaks the alliance with Austria and actually attacks them. Even his advisors are saying, you want to attack your wife's country? And he's like, yeah. And they had to go along with it. He's an absolute ruler. So you see him attack Austria and he takes part of their grain country. He forms an alliance with Great Britain. He begins sponsoring artists and architects and especially musicians, okay? Now, one of the things that is interesting, this is his palace. It's called Sanse Sui. And ironically enough, he was fascinated with a lot of the architecture and music accomplishments of the Bourbon dynasty in France, okay? Remember Louis XIV? He's fascinated with them. Strangely enough, he also goes to war with France at one point, but nonetheless, um, this is his palace. And he's gonna have lots of musicians and artists come to this palace and live. Now, Frederick is an interesting person in history. We have this tough childhood that we talked about, but he's kind of like double famous, okay? He's kind of like double famous. It's rare that you see this in history. We'll talk about Babe Ruth for a second in baseball. Babe Ruth, for the majority of my life, is the home run king. Um, we, we think about his, his wonderful at bats, his ability to hit home runs. But most people don't realize he started out as a pitcher. And he would have been a Hall of Fame pitcher had he never picked up a baseball bat. He was just that good a player, that good a pitcher, and that good of a hitter. Um, the guy that invented the toy train, he also invented the flashlight. So he has kind of double fame there. He did two amazing things. The two toy trains and flashlights don't really put the two together, okay? Frederick the Great was a very accomplished musician. Go to YouTube, type in Frederick the Great, a flute, and you will see that he is not quite like Bach or Beethoven, but as far as like classical musicians go, like he's up at the top of the list. He's a famous musician. So not only is he an absolute ruler, he's a famous musician. So it's interesting. He has, has this like double fame. Okay, let's talk about him. This tragedy with his father and his best friend probably shaped the rest of his life because you are going to see that in his kingdom, like the news with absolute rulers, most of the time the absolute ruler had to say, if you print something about me, it has to be good. He says, you can print whatever you want. So the news can say bad stuff. They can say good stuff. He gives freedom of the press. This is unheard of for an absolute ruler, all right? 
He gives freedom of speech. You can say what you want to here. He gives freedom of religion. So we have a person who is all powerful that gives tons of rights. This is so unique in history. You just don't really find very many places where this happens. He gives so much religious freedom that we're actually going to see this pop back up in history. Um, throughout the world, especially in Europe um, at this point, especially within to Russia, um, you, you had a lot of persecution of Jewish people. He is going to say, hey, if you're having problems, move here. We won't bother you. Prussia eventually becomes German. Okay, it becomes Germany. So we see even in World War II, um, we, we talk about the Holocaust and the Jewish population within Germany. This is the period of history where, where Jewish people were welcomed into Germany. And this is where you start to see their population grow inside of Germany. And, and then later on, hundreds of years later on, there is the Holocaust. And we will talk more about that. So that, that's so strange that they're welcomed at one point in history and, and, and um, these tragedies occur in, in the other, okay? So this is Frederick the Great. If you lived in Prussia at the time, you probably lived in the freest place on the planet. And that's equally as weird because it's under absolutism and we don't associate freedom and absolutism together necessarily. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the story. It's our last one for absolutism. Take care and bye for now.